Hello everybody, welcome back to Reaper Minis TV, and we're going to jump back into building the Darkspawn army. Now before we get into buying any more models, there are some basic army building rules that we need to take a quick look at. You'll remember that each group of soldiers is called a troop. This could also be an individual model like the ones we've already bought, but something to be aware of is in a troop, the soldiers cannot cost more than the leader of the troop. Uh, you may have elites in a troop. They can cost more than the leader. In almost all of your troops that are squads or units of models, you're going to have a leader. There are some exceptions to this, but we'll be building this army with the assumption that every troop is going to have a leader unless it's a solo. Now, you are not allowed to have more solos than leaders. That's where I kind of get into my buying habit of I figure I'm going to be able to get two solos because I'm probably going to be able to get two troops that have leaders. You're never allowed to have more than one warlord, and if you have three or more leaders in your army, one of them is going to have to be a captain or a warlord. Okay, with that out of the way, we can get back to building the army, and as you remember, I figure we're probably going to be able to get four troops out of this army. Two of them have already been built or picked up for the army. We're going to call Troop C, Maladorn, the Fire Demon, and Troop D is going to be Merilith, and that leaves us with Troops A and B needing to be built, and we'll start off with Troop A and take care of that before moving on. Since I know I want Zeldorian to be the warlord of my overall army, and he's also going to serve as the leader of Troop A, we'll go ahead and pick him up and take care of his troop first off, but before we get past that, there's something to talk about that is common to every army, and those are faction doctrines. Now, a faction doctrine is something that every army has access to, and what it allows you to do is customize your army a little bit or get some special abilities that may suit your playing style or your model selection a little better. With the Darkspawn faction, I can choose between two of them. One is a Demonic Conclave doctrine, and the other is a Pain doctrine. Now, with the first one, it gives a bonus to any demon models. They can take extra actions, they can all be summoned in if I want them to, and there's a second part of that one which allows models to gain the nauseating special ability if they perform a focus action to do so. Now nauseating is a good ability, especially for this army, and what it means is that enemy models that move into base to base with your nauseating models have to pass a discipline check to be able to fight against them but models that are already in base to base don't suffer from it so it's sort of a one shot or first round of combat thing but it's definitely not bad the second doctrine the pain doctrine has a little bit different kind of special ability what happens with that is anytime a darkspawn model destroys another model you add a number of tokens now these could be pennies or glass beads or whatever to a cup or just something to hold them in. You add one token for every point of damage or every every mark on the damage track that the enemy model had when it was undamaged. So if you destroy something that had three damage tracks, you put three tokens or pennies into the cup. Now these tokens can be used as the game goes on. They can augment your spell casters. They can be used by leader models to gain stronger attacks. They can also heal damaged models as you're going through the game. So you'll be building these up as you kill enemy models and then using them to press your advantage even more. So there's really no downside to the pain doctrine. And that's the one I'm going to go ahead and select as my faction doctrine for this army. The Demonic Conclave Doctrine is good if you're going to have a lot or the majority of your army made up of demons. And as you'll see as we go along, I'm going to have some in my army, but it's by no means going to be a vast majority. The Nauseating Special Action, like I said, is good. I'm going to have models that have Nauseating in the army, but I don't want to spend a Focus Action to make something Nauseating. With this army, I just want to take things that are Nauseating to begin with. Another thing for us to talk quickly about is what's called a Warlord Benefit. Now, you remember you don't have to take a Warlord in your army. Even if you have three or more leaders in the army, you could go with a Captain and not even take a Warlord at all. But if you do decide to take a Warlord, you're going to get a special benefit based on which one you took. Zeldorian's benefit is called Foul Presence, and what that allows for is any time a model fails a Discipline check when trying to engage with a nauseating model that's in his troop, that model also becomes shaken. So the discipline check is resolved by rolling a d10 and adding your discipline to it. it needs to be a 10 or higher to pass. 
And if they fail it, first of all, they can't strike this turn. They can't make attacks in that first turn. And the second benefit to that is that now they're shaken. What that does, it gives a plus two to the attacker's melee attack value when they're striking at them. So they can't hit me in the first turn if they fail the test. And when I turn around to hit them, I get plus two to hit. Okay, so now we can get into buying the rest of the models that are going to go into Zeldorian's troop. And he has to have somewhere between 6 and 15 soldier models in his troop. And you can use different soldier models in a given troop as long as they all have the rank soldier. And what I want to find first are soldier models that are already nauseating so I can get the greatest bang out of his warlord benefit, the Foul Presence. Now, the broken fodder models are dirt cheap. They're 7 points apiece. They're mindless, so they're not going to suffer from some discipline checks and things like that. They're also nauseating right off the bat, but they are also fairly weak in hand-to-hand. -hand. They have a melee attack value of 4 and just one attack, so they're really more of an overwhelming force just in sheer numbers. I'm probably going to lose a bunch of them, but I just want to get them in there, get benefit of the nauseating ability, and then have other models try to soak up the enemy. When buying the Broken Fodder, you can get them individually for about $5 each, or you can get a pack of nine for $40. So if you need a lot of them, you can get a little bit of a cost break. I'm going to be using a bunch in Zeldorian's troop, so getting the pack of nine just makes a little more money sense for me. I have a couple of slots left that I can put more soldiers into, and what I'm going to do now is take two Ice Demons. They're 30-point models and they are definitely more robust in close combat than the broken fodder and I want to use these to hopefully sweep up the enemy troops that are bogged down in the nauseating stench of the broken fodder. They have a regeneration ability so they have the chance of getting back some of their wounds if they take them in combat and they also have two melee special abilities. The first is cleave, the second is called swing through. Now cleave allows you to do extra damage if you roll higher than you need to to hit an enemy model. So if your attack check is three or more higher than what you needed, you score an extra point of damage. The swing through ability, and you can kind of imagine that with the giant sword he's carrying, allows them to not necessarily target a single individual model. They can target anything that's touching one side of their base. So he's kind of like sweeping that giant sword around, hitting everything, friend and foe, in his way. The Ice Demons cost $10 a piece, and I'm going to take two of them. And then the last model I want to take in Zeldorian's troop is going to be an Elite. I'm going to choose Dekul. He's a Bethalian, which, if you look at the model, he looks a lot like a Mind Flayer. For me, that means I'm going to get a lot of double duty out of him using him in D&D. And I really want him just more because I want a spellcaster in the troop. I want some magic support in the troop. He's not a really tough model, and if he gets into hand-to-hand -hand combat, he may not last really very long compared to some other elites who are really hand-to-hand -hand focused. But he has an ability called Reach, which means he can reach over friendly models that are in front of him to attack the enemy. So that should keep him alive a little bit longer. He costs 79 points and just under $6. And now I've completed Zeldorian's troop. We have 13 models, spent about $83 on it, and 412 points. We'll be back in a second, and we'll start on Troop B of this army.